Did you just get all of that? Because if you didn't, that's all right. Because in this video, we're going to go through the X animation of the total pressure and try and understand this mechanism that I fumbled upon when I was going through the X slices. And I was like, I have to share this with you guys. So in this video, we're going to try and see how the vortex systems are interacting with each other so as to have different philosophies of airflow manipulation to the rear end of the car and along the floor edge. So I promise you this video is going to be super interesting and there's something at the end of the video for you guys to ponder upon and for you guys to speculate to. So before we learn together, I want to give the standard disclaimer that aerodynamics is complex and the intention of this video is not to tell you guys that this is how things work but to speculate potential error mechanisms. So if you are ready, let's dive into it then. So let us kick off the discussion by looking at an X slice of CP total near the front flow leading edge and what I expect here is basically because the geometry upstream is quite ISO, I don't expect big changes. So you can see that you have the normal two counter rotating vortex pair structures, which are from the detachment point or from the outside of the tire. And you know, this structure also has some vorticity from the dive plane that is there on the front wing end plate, which tries to control the detachment point from the outside. Uh, but pretty much similar flow pattern as you would expect on the W14 and the AMR23. You have to point out that in real life this would be very different because the front wings, the front suspensions of both these cars are very different. So you would expect how the front wheel wake is treated quite differently between both of these cars and also the loss distribution would be slightly different. But what is really really uh, striking is when you come down to the second image. So what you can see in this X lies, which is just behind the mid wing that the Mercedes have. So this would be the vortex structure that is given out by the mid wing. And you can clearly see that this is the W14 because you know of the boxy shape of the side pods. And this is the AMR23 because of the wide side pod philosophy that it has, right? So let us break this image down into multiple things which I've kind of written down on the right hand side so that I don't miss out anything. So the first thing is the effective flow vector that you see on both these cars and this comes down to something that I was alluding earlier known as closing the front wheel wake. Now you can clearly see here that the effective flow vector of the mid wing vortex and the combination of the two tire vortices is a dividing streamline that does something like this. What I mean to say is that's the effective flow vector at this point in the slice and what it relies upon is actually outwashing the front wheel wake. So because you have that vector there, the front wheel wake would be tried to be outwashed. And now you might try and say, Shub, I don't see the front wheel wake here. What are you talking about? You have to keep in mind that this simulation is not super accurate, um, especially when it comes to capturing the front wheel wake. There will be a lot of dissipation because it's a RANS uh, CFD in its own right and not a transient simulation. So the wake that you see in a RANS simulation would be very different to what a wake is in real life. But you know that it exists and it will tend to move towards the side pod and, and go towards the rear end of the car. So you want to outwash it as, as much as possible. And this mechanism is what we believed it to be. But what I meant by saying closing the wake is you see how this mechanism is completely different because it does not have the mid wing vortex. Its primary vortex structure is actually the vortex structure down here. Now, what do I mean by this? So the undercut creates a lot of outwash onto the floor because of the pressurization that we spoke about in the previous parts. Do check those videos out if you haven't checked them out yet because that will give you a better understanding of what I'm trying to say here. So you can see that the pressurization built from the undercut on the AMR23 would make this vortex structure stronger and stronger because of the outwash that you drive, right? And that in combination with the structure present on top gives you a flow vector which is directly perpendicular or almost perpendicularish to this wall of the sidewall that you have. 
And now this has a couple of implications, right? And some of y'all who have watched part one, two, and three, suddenly this would be like a Eureka moment. At least it was a Eureka moment for me. Because what this does is it limits your side pod losses by assisting the flow around the side pod. So there are no, there's no premature separation around the side pod. The sensitivity of separation around the side pod would be quite less or the losses that come from the side pod themselves would be quite suppressed. And thus this flow would be very, very clean. And not only that, this would clearly show you that the wake is being closed. That is you attack the inside part of the front wheel wake by pushing it out. And then you close the external part of the front wheel wake by drawing free stream air from outside inwards. And thus you'll end up closing the front wheel wake, which is what I guess if you watch part two and part three uh, would now make sense because there were a lot of questions in trying to understand what do you mean by closing the front wheel wake? And this is exactly what I mean. You treat the inside part through the pressurization of the side wall and you treat the outside part of the front wheel wake by drawing high and clean energy air from the free stream and then you'll end up closing the front wheel wake which seems to be a much more consistent mechanism uh, across different yaw roll and pitch conditions as compared to relying on just pushing the wake out using the vortex structure from the mid wing uh, that the w14 does so very interesting mechanism there but what are some of the other perks of this mechanism so i think this is a beautiful image because it also shows you a couple of other things that the outwash created by the undercut would land up helping you dealing a lot with the lower wheel wake management to make sure that none of that lower wheel wake from the tire gets sucked in and not only that because you're powering this vortex up you would drive more front floor expansion uh, which would again give you a higher downforce that is a higher suction pressure drop. So I know I've repeated this concepts a lot of times in part one and two, but I'm just trying to piece them together for those of you who haven't understood it in the first go itself. But you can see that the dividing flow line vector here is quite different and the mechanism by which they deal with the front wheel wake is quite different. And this picture clearly shows it by looking at the dividing flow line or the effective flow vector basically. Let us look at the last slice which is slightly towards the rear end of the car and again this shows you something quite beautiful because what you can clearly see here is one of the main drawbacks of the W14 is that all these losses that you see which are like cockpit losses and side pod losses because you have a flow vector due to this vortex that is going downwards that is down washing all the losses all the losses from the side pod land up on top of the floor edge which is not very nice because you know how sensitive this region is we've seen how clean this region is for the red bull through some of the beautiful slowest pictures that we've seen during testing and yes you might say how do you know this losses even exist i don't but i can tell you that there will be some amount of losses definitely from the chassis region because the chassis is not the most streamlined part of the body right and because this vortex in itself is inherently down washing my guess is that all those losses would do travel down towards the floor edge which would definitely hurt that diffuser performance but again if you look at the effective flow vector the dividing streamline something very interesting is happening you can see that you have a vortex here and your usual vortex here and that gives you an effective vector which is towards the car but then because of the vortex structure from the mid wing which is this one your dividing streamline becomes that so almost this vortex here from the mid wing acts as a barrier for the free stream air coming from the outside to not be feeding directly to the rear end of the car but the way it lands up going is it lands up doing something like that so you're feeding the air from top which is like going around the bush uh, to solve the problem in a very strange way Merck have divided the vorticity in an unfavorable way for these aero regulations I feel like you can see the aero philosophy it exists but maybe it's just not the right way to do it for these kind of regulations meanwhile you can see that for the amr 23 which is this one you have the lower vortex and the upper vortex which is like 
slightly muted now because as i said the lower vortex is much more powerful and is the more dominant vortex structure here and what that lands up giving you is a flow vector which basically encourages air free stream air from the outside to be fed to the rear end of the car and you can also see that it would feed flow to the water slide so again how the water slide exactly remains attached is a question in its own right but you can see that this mechanism like the combination of these vortex structures um, the effective flow vector is such that you're drawing air from the outside feeding it to the rear end of the car while for mercedes what happens is the mid-wing vortex almost lands up becoming a barrier and does not allow the flow to be entrained directly like that but has to go all around and has to be fed all the way from the top which is slightly strange and maybe not the most consistent mechanism across different dynamic conditions so this is for the straight line case but let us look at what happens in yaw but in this case i will let you guys figure out because what i'm going to do is i'm going to play the animation the x slice animation of cpt across the entire length of the car in slow speed and let you guys figure out what is happening and let me know in the comments below what mechanisms you've got and what do you think is happening which is making the amr 23 much more effective in your conditions and much more consistent in your conditions So this is the end of the four part series in which we spoke about the side pod philosophies of the AMR23 and the W14. Now again, these CFD models were not perfect and my intention is not to tell you guys that this is how things work. This video is meant for the crowd who want to know how aeronamesis manipulate airflow around cars and what do people really mean when they say different aero philosophies, right? So this is meant for you guys, not for the experts who would obviously cringe about what CFD model did you use and that front wing is not really accurate and the car is an ecosystem you cannot isolate the side pods and analyze the flow guys I know this right and I appreciate your feedback and I appreciate your concern but this is meant for people who want to learn about aero philosophies and how airflow manipulation works so if you've enjoyed this series give me a like and if you enjoy content like this give me a subscribe the next avenue on this channel is going to be trying to develop some fundamental series in which we try to teach people about how front wings works how diffusers work how side pods work how tire wake management works so a lot of exciting things coming out of this channel so do subscribe because i'm pretty sure there's going to be exciting content coming your way have a good one see ya